it's, it's a way that we can, a mechanism that we can teach what we would learn. In fact, have you ever had the experience where you're just joining for somebody, somebody's like calling out for love and you just so much want to be truly helpful and you sit down with them and you, you just are so in the love, you're just like, like you're in St. Francis' prayer, Lord make me an instrument, you know, you're just there for that one reason. And then the words come, come through you, so to speak, and the words that you're speaking are the very words that you need to hear. Mm -hmm. This idea of a person and another person is just a construct for us to get so into purpose that what we say is what we most need to hear. That started to happen to me so many times when I started to get into miracle working. I would just have this deep call to join and be of total service, like, Lord make me an instrument. And then when they would ask the question, the words would start coming out and I would be going, I need to pay attention to these words because this is the answer to what I was just praying for. See, I was praying for an answer and then it being truly helpful, the Spirit was like, and now here you go, this is your answer. The words that you give is the words that you most need to hear. And it started to happen to me all the time, where I was aware that it wasn't a person teaching another person. I was just letting the mechanism be used so I could get the answer to my, my prayers. It, it just reverses this idea that, that the body is like a receptor. Um, and now with movies like What the Bleep, you know, where they're starting to show that, that it's thoughts and consciousness, but then there's chemicals and peptides you know, that influence the way that the body seems to feel. It all originates in, in consciousness. And then they'll even say that we even draw forth characters and situations that reflect what's going on inside of us. It's really showing, it's making all the connections, but instead of it being an external world that's completely apart from us, it's seen more as a reflection of, of consciousness. Which is very empowering, because if the world was apart from you, then it'd be easier to stay with the belief that you're just a victim. Mm -hmm. It's like a cruel, angry, hostile world out there, and you got to just make the best of, of an external world with external conditions. When we look at it this way, we say, oh my gosh, I, I can purify my awareness, I can, can have my, all my beliefs transformed, I can release attack thoughts, and the whole world I perceive will change. Because it's all coming from, through the projector, and through consciousness, and, and consciousness can be changed. So that's why Jesus says, seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. The projected world is like the effect, and the causation, in the ultimate sense, is, is, is in coming to thoughts, which can be changed and ultimately released, you can give up all ego thoughts, and you're left with just beautiful spirit-inspired thoughts, your real thoughts, Jesus calls them, and then you see the real world, or the forgiven world. That's so different from trying to change the world. It would be almost like going to a movie theater and watching the movie and having emotions come up during the movie, and then going down and start pounding on the screen as if you don't like, like, stop that. <laughs> I always use the example of Gone with the Wind, Rhett Butler, you know, to Scarlett, frankly my darling, I don't give a damn, and going down and saying, stop that, Rhett, the big screen, Clark Gable, stop it, don't talk to her like that, <laughs> stop it, you know, which, which is ridiculous because you're thinking, it's, it's the movie, it's the projection that's coming from the, it's, it's in the can, it was filmed. And why would you hit a screen to, if you were upset at something, thinking that the screen should stop showing that projection? You'd have to get all the way back into the projector and clear away the, the film to let that light stream out there. You see, it's the same thing with the mind. We, we can't keep trying to react and respond to people and circumstances and situations. Even the weather, you know, it may seem like the weather is just the weather. How is it? It's cold. Or how is it? It's hot. Where is cold and hot coming from? And don't you know those, those yogis 
that they've done, that they put into the freeze chambers with the little G-string on, and they stay in there, and they don't freeze. The skin doesn't freeze, they, they emanate, they actually generate heat, because it's consciousness. So think about that with the most basic things, like it's cold or it's hot. You see how the mesmerism would have you say, it's a cold day, or it's a hot day. I, I had a friend one time that traveled with me, and we were in Florida, it was, you know, like one of those seemingly humid, hot days in Florida, we're driving along, and she's sitting in the front seat with me, and I'm just so into the joy of the course, I'm just, you know, going to gatherings and sharing and shining, and she's in the front seat, and okay. the sweat is just <laughs> dripping down her face, and, and the air conditioner in the car uh, just broke, and it's a Sunday, and there's nothing open, and she's just like, Oh, I'm dying, it's so hot. And, and I, I was driving, I said, oh, you're having hot thoughts. <laughs> and she was like, she gave me a look, like, what did you say? I said, you're having hot thoughts. <laughs> it, it never had dawned on her mind <laughs> that what she was experiencing was just coming from thoughts mm -hmm. and nothing more. Not the environment. Mm. Humidity is a thought. Everything. Mm. It's mm. one of Armel's favorite things. Everything is a thought. Mm. Mm. She was saying the other day, I have to remember that. Mm. I love it when I have that awareness. Mm. It's all thought. Mm. Because see how empowering that is. Mm. You can work with your mind. You can work with thoughts. You can work with that. But as long as you are a separate human being, apart from an external world, with all of these external conditions, mm. Mm. you see how mm. From that perception, you could be at the mercy of the world. You could be at the mercy of many things that are, seem to be outside of you, as long as you see it as outside. And the whole Course workbook, you know, is going back and forth. Did you ever notice the, the rhythm of those early lessons? He starts off with perceptual lesson. Nothing I see means anything. He comes in with another perceptual lesson. I have given everything I see all the meaning as for me. But then, suddenly, in lesson number four, he turns into thoughts. These thoughts do not mean anything. So he's first he's talking about perception, then he's talking about thoughts. Then he goes back to perception and emotions. I'm never upset for the reason I think. He's still got a little bit of thoughts. And then, my meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. When he makes the connection between meaningless thoughts and a meaningless world, he's begun his integration, where he's going to show you that the thoughts that you think you think with the ego, and the world that you think you perceive through the ego's lens, are not different. That those ego thoughts and that fragmented world of images are actually the same. And that you are literally perceiving an egoic world because you're thinking egoic thoughts. And if you let go of those egoic thoughts, that's when the merge occurs. That's when holistic healing occurs, where you start to realize, there is nothing outside of me. Not personal me, but mind. There is nothing outside of the mind. Everything is, is mind. There is no material and mental. We've been taught that there's the physical and the mental realm, that they're two different realms, but that's just in fragmented perception. And the Course is taking you more and more into that merge. And what happens when you, when you experience the merge? Victimization becomes impossible. Abuse becomes impossible. Mistreatment becomes impossible. Because if everything is mind, and there's, everything is unified, then there is no two to conflict. So there's no competition, there's no conflict, there's no war, there's no mistreatment of any kind, because all is unified awareness. That's how it works. That's why when you practice the Course of Miracles, that's the state of mind it takes you in.